Hello, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, and esteemed members of the media. Namaste, and a very, very warm welcome to all of you to the official launch of Global Telehealth Exchange in India. Now, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and making this event so much more special for us. My name is Dominic Tan, and I have the honor of being your MC for this event. Before we start, please allow me to just quickly run through the agenda for this or today. So we will first hear from, uh, from during this event, what we will do is we will hear from Mr. Pradeep Gold, who is a true visionary and a CEO and founder of Solve Care. And if you could move to the next slide, thank you. So with more than 30 years of experience in blockchain, finance, technology, and healthcare, Pradeep has designed and built solutions for various public health programs, children health insurance, and welfare programs in the US and other countries. He has been in Deloitte's technology Fast 500 in the fastest growing companies list multiple times. He was also in the 100 most promising entrepreneurs globally compiled by Goldman Sachs. Next, we will also hear from Dr. B.S. Rata. Director of HealthLink Technologies, who has also 30 years of experience in healthcare. A qualified robotic surgeon and a pediatric surgeon, Dr. Ratsa received his training from the world-renowned Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital and the Institute of Child Health London. With more than 13 years of experience in the field of telemedicine, Dr. Ratsa has previously served as the president of the Telemedicine Society of India. We are also very privileged today as we'll be expecting our VIP guest of honor, the national president of the Indian Medical Association, Professor Dr. J.A. Jayalal to join us shortly. The IMA is the largest body of registered medical practitioners in India. Professor Jailal will be delivering the keynote speech and will also be inaugurating the launch of GTHE here in India. Apart from the IMA, Professor Jailal holds numerous leadership posts in various local and international medical organizations, such as the Commonwealth Medical Association in London, various posts in UNESCO under the auspices of the United Nations, and many, many more. He is also currently, he currently serves as the Professor of Surgery in the Tirun, sorry, Tirunel Valley Government Medical College Hospital. Sorry, that was a little bit of a tongue twister there for me. And we are indeed honored that, he's, he, that he will be here with us today. We will also have a demo to show you as to, uh, as to how a patient living in a different country can find a doctor in India book an appointment and have a teleconsultation with them. And towards the end of the event, we will have a media Q&A session. Members of the media, you will notice there is a text box on the right of the screen. Please feel free to submit your questions at any time and we will be collating the questions throughout the event. We will address all these questions as much as possible as time permits during the Q&A session. So, what exactly is Global Telehealth Exchange? In a nutshell, GTHE is a revolutionary, first of its kind global cross-border telehealth network built on blockchain. It breaks through barriers of geography and provides greater access to healthcare to those who need it. And for medical practitioners, GTHE allows you to practice medicine the way you want to and the way it should be. So, before we carry on, let's start off with a short video. And without further ado, let's say hello to the future of healthcare.
right. So now you just have a taste of what GTA or GTAG offers and promises. Now, without further ado, again, I would really like it gives me great pleasure to invite Mr. Pradeep Goel, CEO of Solvecare, for his speech. Uh, Pradeep, would you be so kind to, to deliver your speech? Thank you, Dominic, and namaskar, everyone. My name is Pradeep Goel, and it is an honor to be here today. I left India 30 years ago as a young man, studied in the US and had the privilege of working with some of the smartest minds in healthcare and insurance and government policy. So it's a particular honor to be back 30 years later and to be part of making healthcare better in India and around the world. So this is a very exciting and personal moment for me and I appreciate you joining us. You'll be hearing a lot from the SolveCare team and our partners in India. I'm honored to have Dr. Bhagwan Singh Rata, who is the president of HealthLink, which is our partner in India, and his guidance over the months and years in making global telehealth exchange work better for India and Indian physicians and Indian patients. You'll also be hearing from some of our stars at SolveCare who have helped make this product and this vision possible. Uh, you can see on screen Agatha, who has been part of our journey from the beginning, and she will be presenting to you how the system is designed to serve patients better. And I'm very proud of the work that this team does. I only get to present to you what these people work day and night to make real and make possible. So thank you for joining us on this journey. I will take a few minutes and introduce to you why Global Telehealth Exchange and why India. So I have worked in many different countries in many different uh, healthcare climates. Uh, fee-for-service, fully insured, government subsidized, uh, where patients have unfettered access to doctors and where patients have to wait months to get an appointment with a doctor. And what I've found common across all these countries, be it India or United States or Canada or China, is that ultimately the relationship between the patient and the doctor determines the outcome. That's the only relationship that matters. And our vision and mission is to make that relationship work better for both sides. And you may ask the question, why blockchain? Why are we using blockchain? And in one simple sentence is to protect both sides. We can assure that both the patient rights and the doctor rights are enforced through the blockchain, which is transparent and encrypted and secure. And there are many ways you can use that power. And that's what we use it for in healthcare to achieve coordination and transparency between patient and doctor. And you will see more of that as you get to see Global Telehealth Exchange in action. Now, India is a unique um, opportunity for improving healthcare access. It's a diverse country, it's a massive country. It has huge pockets of rural and urban population. And we certainly have patients who struggle to get access to, to quality of care on a timely basis. And I should point out that that's not just an issue for India, it's an issue for every part of the world. I can assure you that rural Kentucky in the United States looks no different than Bihar or Uttar Pradesh in terms of access to physicians and the wait time involved and how long you have to wait to get a, a specialty care appointment. Here are the facts. One out of three patients will wait a month to get an appointment with a specialty, specialist in the United States. Those numbers are similar or, or worse in developing countries, but those are the numbers. And how can we make that better? Because delayed healthcare is almost the same as denied healthcare. We all know that delayed healthcare leads to human suffering, more cost, and a longer recovery time. So our mission is one thing and one thing only, to make healthcare accessible to all when they need it. Not three days later, not 30 days later, and to make that happen in a secure, reliable manner. Meaning that, the, meaning that the, the, what the, their choices are and to be able to make that choice and the physician to be able to practice medicine without becoming a data entry operator. Again, more on that later. What I want you to really take away is that the SolveCare team is working very collaboratively with health 
Tech and Dr. Ratha and his team, and many, many, many esteemed physicians in the United States, in India, in Nigeria, in Turkey, in Australia, to make healthcare work better. We are proud to be a partner to the doctor because if the physician is not effective in their care delivery, the patient is not going to get better. And this is what we are really focused on. We are a partner to the physician. And our question every day, morning and evening and in the afternoon is, what can we do for the doctor to be a doctor, not a data entry clerk, not a billing agent, not a collections agency, but a physician? Because they went to school and they devoted their life to taking care of us. So how about we take care of them? So that's the thought process behind Global Telehealth Exchange. And we're very proud to be having to be a partner to the physician community in India and launching there. So there is a lot to cover. I will not consume a lot of your time, but I will say a few words about HealthLink Technologies, which Dr. Rata leads. We got to know them a few months ago or rather a year ago, and we heard the vision that Dr. Rata has for improving healthcare and making physicians more effective. And we realized that we share that vision. And we quickly started to work together with the idea of making the technology and the solution work better for the physicians. And then we decided that Dr. Ratha and his team are the best team to actually connect with and serve the physicians on a day-to-day -day basis. And that resulted in our partnership where HL Technologies is representing Global Telehealth Exchange across the Indian subcontinent. I also want to thank Dr. Jayalal for joining us. It's a true honor to have him be with us because visionaries like that and thought leaders like that to allow us to make an impact, not in a state, not in a city, but across the country. And I'm going to turn over the mic to him very shortly, but I want to just leave you with two or three final thoughts. The idea of Global Telehealth Exchange is to empower the physician to be a physician, to be the best physician they can be and to remove every other distraction from their life so they don't have to worry about billing and appointments and collections and consents and forms and uh, appointment management, cancellations and refunds, everything that we should be doing for them and we do. So this is all about enabling the physician to be the best physician they can be. And then from a patient point of view, it's about access when you need it. And our vision is that from the point when we know that a patient is looking for care, no more than 15 minutes should pass before they are talking to a qualified physician. Be it their physician who they normally work with or someone who is available and qualified to take care of their immediate need. And the third thing I want to take away is that healthcare is not just about visiting the doctor. Healthcare is a journey. And our goal here is not to just take care of episodic care. 15 minutes you spend with a doctor only puts you on a path to recovery. It doesn't get you to the end game. The end game could be weeks and months later and you have to stay connected along the way. So we think of healthcare as journeys, not as episodes, not as events, not as consultations, but as a journey of care. And on that journey, you take your physician along and you take your family along because you cannot do this alone. When you are sick, you need all the love and all the care you can get and you need all the guidance you can get. So it shouldn't be about, oh, I got a consultation and then I'm done and I'm on my own because you're not on your own. There are people who care about you who want to stay with you and the doctor, your physician wants to care about you and wants to know, are you doing better or worse? So they can intervene. A physician is not just an episodic care provider, they are a care provider. So we are designing and improving our software and our partnerships and our service organization to ensure that that care journey is delivered. And that's the mission behind Global Telehealth Exchange. But now that Dr. Jayalal is here, I think it behooves me to turn it over to him and hear his mission. Welcome Dr. Jayalal, and thank you everyone for being on this journey with us. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, it is my uh, greetings from Indian Medical Association, the largest professional body of India. It is a great pleasure for me to be here and I would like to thank both Mr. Pradeep and Mr. Dr. Ratha for inviting me to be here with you on today. When I was first here or briefed by Dr. Ratha, I was excited by the, of the proposed prospect, the global telehealth exchange promise for the medical practitioners. We know that today with the changing scenario of the COVID, 
the telemedicine and telehealth is playing a major role in India. In every part of the country, every even a small district of the Nuke and Connell, the people are now involved in the telemedicine and telehealth. The various uh, players are there in the field. One of the many important uh, challenge which we all face in the telemedicine or the telehealth is the security of the data. I was briefed that the blockchain technology is one of the finest technology which has been almost more than 50% of the, all the industries are adopting this technology. It is one of the technology where encryption and the security of the data is best assured. I'm also happy to hear from uh, uh, Mr. Pradeep that uh, it is not only that the uh, healthcare the consultation or the data collected is going to be there for the interaction only for that particular moment, but it is going to be there for the continuous care, continuous monitoring, continuous hand holding, and the continuous assignment of the particular person's health. I'm sure that that will be able to uh, in incorporate. This is one of the new technology. When our Nidhi Ayo, which is the uh, the hallmark unit for promoting technology in India, when they were saying there's a three component, you know, they always to say it is enabling ease of business, ease of uh, living and ease of governance. And these three are the most uh, major principle with this our government of India, Nidhi Ayok is working. And uh, I was so happy to read from the Nidhi Ayok Vice President Chairman and uh, the statement, the block technology is one of the emerging technology, which is one of the most up, up to down technology for uh, ensuring and empowering or enabling ease of governance, ease of healthcare delivery or ease of making the patients to have the good living. So we need to embrace this new technology that will enable us to become better medical practitioners for the sake of our patients because our ultimate aim of every doctor of this country is the benefit should reach to the patients because of the workload pressure and the more and more patients coming many times we are not able to spend most of our time, valuable time with the patients, but this blockchain technology I have made definitely help us to have the continuous care on the people. I understand that Oil Salve Care is an international company. It has strong Indian roots too. Pradeep Goyal may have made his name in the US, playing his trade and expertise for two US presidents healthcare initiative. He is still nevertheless a son of India who was born and educated here. So it is a great privilege for us, an Indian, uh, to get uh, acquainted with Dr. Mr. Pradeep Goel, the uh, Indian, and making an impact in the international arena of the healthcare. And so we are happy to be a partner with him for this uh, great, gracious and uh, the, the very uh, growing the technological input in the healthcare. Solve Care also has a large development team based in India, where they have played a crucial part in building this revolutionary state of art global telehealth network. In that light, India can be proud of the fact that that she has contributed significantly in developing cutting-edge blockchain technology for the advancement of the global medical industry. We know the tremendous pressure doctors are currently experiencing due to the challenges this pandemic has put upon our healthcare system. I am grateful to companies like Solve Care who are introducing innovative technologies like blockchain to alleviate this pressure. What excites me about the GTHC is that it offers a platform for Indian doctors to provide their expertise and service to the rest of the world without have, having to leave the country. That is one of the great advantage what we feel that geographical barriers are now crossed, geographical difficulties are now overcome. Even other, the language, linguistic, understanding, most of these problems are now solved. So the Indian doctor, we know for sure, even for in other ways, both in US and UK, they play a crucial role in the healthcare delivery system by living there. And now Indians will have an opportunity to serve the international community through this technology if we are adopting to that. On that note, it gives me great pleasure to officially launch the Global Telehealth Exchange in India and I am sure and I am optimistic this technology will definitely get a place in the healthcare delivery system of every part of our country and Indian Medical Association assure our fullest support, cooperation and coordination with the Solve Care and uh, Pradeep Goel for ensuring India uh, getting benefit out of this blockchain technology. So I am delighted, happy and thank you for this opportunity. May God ensure and empower us to help 
this technology reach out to everyone in this country thank you very much thank you dr jayalal we are honored All right thank you so very much dr uh, professor jayalal for inaugurating the launch of gthe so now through gthe patients around the world can now easily avail themselves to the world class healthcare services that india doctors provide wherever and whenever now last but by no means the least i would like to call upon dr b s rata to provide us with his address dr rata if you will yes good afternoon and thank you dominic it's really my privilege and honor on behalf of healthlink technologies and its team to partner with solvecare on global health tele global telehealth exchange we are very excited and enthusiastic because it's been few decades that i was looking something like this in the indian continent we my journey started almost about 3 decades ago after my training at great ormond street children's hospital when my dear friend professor ricky richardson started a company called welke international which was connecting saudi arabian hospitals to massachusetts institute in the us and he was very keen that we would do the same from india however during that decade it was difficult as we were pretty primitive with our uh, mobile technology and also with our std booths etc however the technology came into existence around 2000 when government of india tried to put satellites into the space to bring healthcare to every single indian home so the indian space research organization brought in about 400 nodes which were deployed across the country connecting major hospitals to district hospitals where all specialty care could be provided to our rural brethren living in the hinterland india as you know is a very vast country extending from himalayas in the north to indian ocean in the south desert on the west to seven sisters a hilly terrain in the east and with this majority of the population lives in the rural area to an extent of 68 70% percent. 30% of population lives in the urban area but the doctor pop population ratio is the reverse majority of the doctors are concentrated in tier 1 tier 2 cities and there are hardly any doctors maybe 25 28% to service almost 68% people living in the rural area but the good news is that with 1.38 billion people we have more than 1.6 billion mobile phones so there's no reason why every single indian cannot access healthcare today according to the indian public health center 12% that is 1.2 lakh out of a million do not have access to healthcare on a daily basis imagine weekly monthly and on a yearly basis so it is here that my vision resonated with pradeep's vision when he brought in blockchain technology so as we were discussing a year ago and i had traveled through various parts of telemedicine across the country and in the year 2006 with my friend in london and through department of trade and industry in uk we were able to raise 200 pound 200000 pounds to conduct the first international conference in pune right here that was transforming healthcare through technology and that was the beginning of my journey into telemedicine and having seen the 2g 3g roll out satcom satellite and then fiber optic cloud computing and what i see today the future lies with blockchain technology and that's how pradeep and my vision kind of resonated and i said 
look, as the government of India is bringing in the largest healthcare service to the uh, in the world through Ayushman Bharat. This is the technology with which we will be able to do a public-private partnership with the government of India. So there was also the question of COVID-19 coming in, which kind of exposed the drawback in our infrastructure in the manpower and also the lack of nursing, paramedical staff, hospitals, etc. And economy had already taken a tailspin by this time. And during this, when all this was happening, and I came across Pradeep, and we said we must bring blockchain technology in healthcare for the sake of the patient, for the sake of the doctor. A doctor must enjoy practicing rather than be burdened by his administrative staff, setting up appointments, making bills, etc as Pradeep and Professor Jayalal previously mentioned also. Now, this having been said, we must realize that there is a large population of Indians living and working abroad. Now, they would like to connect with the doctor in India to provide them with the continuum of care. So as Pradeep said, this is a journey and not an episodic event. It's not just a consultation. So if I have a friend, a family living in US, UK, Europe, Middle East, Africa, gives me a call and say, look, my father is not well, my child is not well, they're living in India and I want you to take care. It is my pleasure to connect to Global Telehealth Exchange Network and using SolveCare platform to provide that journey. Similarly, there are a lot of those with family and parents still in India, but their children are working abroad. So they want to ensure that their parents are well looked after, even though they are not here. So they could connect with their doctors in India and provide similar journeys in healthcare. There is also a very large proportion of doctors who have trained in the US, UK, Europe, Australia, and have returned back to their motherland to serve the Indian population in the best way they could. Now, since they are all recognized and registered with the board certified or with the medical council, they are also able to increase their revenues by seeing patients across the globe. Similarly, there are doctors who are trained in India and have gone abroad. They can in return service their country or take part in providing, uh, bridging the doctor-patient ratio gap by adding on to the numericals. So these are many of the ways that the Indian doctors, whether in India or across the world, are able to help. GTHE is a convenient network to provide care to those who can't come to us as doctors. It is doctor and patient centric. It can resurrect the failing healthcare system, the bureaucracy, endless cycles of coordinating medical care, provide transparency, protect data and confidentiality. Solve care is meant for both provider and patient. It's centric to both in solving complex medical problems, minus administrative burden, coordinating care and payments. And this has been designed in such a way that last year when Ministry of Health with the help of Niti IO, Telemedicine Society of India was working for a long, long time to bring in a telehealth bill across the country, but which was not possible for X, Y, Z reason. However, COVID made that happen. India went into lockdown on 24th March and on 25th March, the TSI activity along with Niti IO saw the dividend 
in, in the form of telemedicine practice guidelines that were released by the Ministry of Health, Family Welfare. So a lot of do's and don'ts concerns the way you need to con carry out the teleconsultation, the way you need to give your prescription has all been followed undoubtedly on the global telehealth network as well as on the solve care platform. And that will be a very big boost for all the Indian patients to break the boundary. As one of my colleagues in Telemedicine Society of India, Professor Ganapati used to say, geography has become history and India needs not only to frog leap, but pole vault from here in telehealth consumption. You have e-ticketing, you have e-finance, you have e-banking, why not e-health? And India being at the cusp of telehealth in India, it's a great, great opportunity. And thank you, Pradeep. And thank you, Professor Jairlal, for recognizing that this is the future block health technology in healthcare that we are going to be bringing to India and sharing all our pathways, all our journeys throughout with the masses in India. It's a great, great opportunity. Let's make the best of it. Let doctors enjoy practicing medicine. Let patients enjoy the fruits of this journey by doctors hand-holding them throughout their illness. Thank you very much. Now, I would like you to see for a second how we conduct this. Dominic will take us to the demo of a patient doctor communicating on this platform. All right, so Dr. Rata, thank you very, very much. I uh, can just remain there as well for just a short while longer as we are about to go into this demo. So uh, before we go into that, I would like to invite Mr. Suhaim Azhar who has kindly volunteered to participate in this upcoming demo. Uh, Suhaim is now actually currently in Dubai at the moment. And what he will do is he will go through the process of booking an appointment with Dr. Rata, as you know, who is currently in India. Uh, next, we, we have Ms. Agatha Banak, who is SolveCare's GTHE product manager. What, what Agatha will do is she will walk us through Suhaim's journey as he goes through booking the appointment and explaining oh, what he's doing and what are the nuances and so on. So welcome Suhaim and Agatha. Thank you so much for being here. How are you all today? Very good. How so are you, Dominic? Okay, cool. So we're all looking forward to this demo. All right, uh, are we yes. ready? All right. So uh, now technical team, can you please disable Dr. Rata, Suhaim and Agatha's videos and give them a few moments to get ready? and then we can start the demo. While Suhaim is logging in, I will make a quick introduction to what will be presented. As you may know, Suhaim is currently in Dubai, about to book an appointment with Dr. Rara, who is in India. We will proceed through booking process first from the patient's perspective, and then give the stage to Dr. Rara, who will share his insight about provider solution. All right, let's proceed. To look for Dr. Rada, Suhaim will click on Find a Doctor. Now, Suhaim has to choose the type of the doctor he would like to see. In this case, it's primary care doctor. After choosing the type of doctor, we are able to add additional preferences, like time of appointment, language, or gender if appointment is of sensitive kind. To view doctors that are available right away, we can simply press the Request button. The list will populate with all available doctors. There we go. So Haim can choose any of the doctors available, but since Dr. Rada is waiting for us, let's book an appointment with him. We have a few appointment options to choose from here. Let's pick the soonest one. This is the last step before an appointment is booked. We see the summary with all appointment details and payment options. Now so Haim can pay either with Solve or US dollars. Using Solve does away with having to depend on Forex and bank exchanges, enabling immediate payments, even though it's an international transactions. And since Suhaim has Solve in his care wallet, 
let's use it to pay and confirm the appointment. Now that the appointment is confirmed, Care Wallet will notify Soheim to share her symptoms and past medical records. All patient data and GTHE remains in complete control of the patient. So if Soheim decides to see another doctor, let's say in a year, his medical records will be stored in his Care Wallet. All right, it looks like we're all set before the appointment. You can see Soheim now entering the waiting room and the consultation will start shortly. Let's see what's happening on Dr. Sorata's side. Dr. Rada? You can see that I have a notification of a booking in my calendar. I don't have to manually accept the appointment. GTHE automatically accepts it for me based on the setting of availability and appointment types that I had set earlier. This helps to do away with a lot of administration burden that a doctor may have to deal with in his traditional setting. In actuality, the earliest you can book an appointment with a doctor is 15 minutes. This gives enough time for doctors to prepare for the appointment and go over whatever medical records the patient has sent if need be. However, for the purpose of this demo, we will not be waiting for 15 minutes and shall proceed to the teleconsult as Soheim is waiting in the waiting room. Hello Soheim, how are you? Hello Dr. Rata, I'm fine, how are you? Very well, thank you. And how's the weather in Dubai? Uh, the weather is good now, Doctor. Summer seems to be coming to an end, so I think we'll have good weather soon. That's great, that's great. So you can see the interface where the patient and the doctor are on the teleconsult. And during this time of teleconsult, I'll be able to advise the patient according to his symptoms and go over the medical records with the patient if he has shared with me earlier. I'll also be able to write notes or prescription during or after the consult directly into GTHE and share that with the patient for their records. So this is how the interface on two sides would look like and I would thank so him at this point for taking part in this demo. Thank you, so him. It was my, it was my pleasure, Doctor Rata. I will end this session now. Thank you. As you can see, once the session is over both the parties can review the teleconsultation and I can even send the prescription over to the GTHE. You can see that the prescription has been sent to Soheim Azar. That and I can show you how the payment has been made. That concludes the demo and I shall return back to the Zoom interface. All right, ladies and gentlemen, members of media, I hope that demo showed how easy and quick it was to search, find, book and have a teleconsultation with a doctor, even though they were over a thousand miles apart. And I'd like to give my thanks both to both Suheim and Agatha as well for explaining and going through the process with us. Right. So members of the media, I hope that you have all submitted your questions for the, uh, for the media Q&A session. Now, if you have not done so, don't worry, you can still do so right now. And as we move into the 
media Q&A session, I would like to pass the baton to Ms. Aska Shaik, my colleague from Ad Factors PR, who will be moderating the session. Aska, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dominic. Welcome, everyone. Hope all of you are doing well. As mentioned earlier, towards your right-hand side, there is a Q&A box for media queries. The text accepted is in English. Please put in your questions if you haven't already. Our spokespeople, Mr. Goel and Dr. Rata, will be answering your questions. Moving on, the first question is, what is the main objective of this whole platform? It would be great if you could elaborate on that. This is Pradeep. I will uh, answer this question with uh, assistance from Dr. Ratha. He did an excellent job of explaining the value to the patient and the doctor. But to make this something like what you just saw happen, there is a lot of underlying processes that need to be automated and managed for this to work for a patient and a doctor across country boundaries. So five things that one needs to manage, making sure that we understand who the patient is, what their needs are, making sure that they are connected to a qualified doctor, making sure that that connection is allowed by law, making sure that the payments are transferred across country boundaries, and making sure that the records are kept secure, and making sure that the transaction relate and the consultation and the post-consultation care is managed, coordinated, and auditable. So the purpose of the platform is to make all that happen so that something as simple as a consult between doctor and patient can happen according to the law, according to the compliance and regulatory rules, finance and payment rules, as well as efficiently. We would not want Dr. Ratha to spend his time as a physician doing things that he shouldn't be spending time on. His entire day should be spent taking care of Suhail, not booking and accepting appointments, not dealing with cancellations and, and reappointments, all of that work that normally happens with the business of running a health clinic or a practice, the platform takes care of that. And I will put something in very simple context. Uh, I was part of a government project many years ago where we studied how a physician spends his time, literally from morning till evening in the clinic. We followed hundreds of physicians around for many months and we looked at what they do and we realized that for every minute that the physician is talking to the patient, they spend two and a half minutes doing something related to the patient, two and a half minutes. So if you see a patient for six minutes, you spend 15 minutes in pre and post appointment activity, which is not clinical in nature, it's all administrative. And that's not what the doctor went to medical school for, how to be a really good data entry clerk. That's not why they started their practice so that they could spend one third of their time talking to you and I and two thirds of their time dealing with appointments and billing and payments and collections and, and HIPAA consents and, and various other regulatory filings and so on. So the platform automates all that. It removes all that burden. We want the physician to practice medicine 50 minutes an hour and have 10 minutes of break between appointments so that they can actually recollect their thoughts and not spend any of their time doing the other things they have to do. Today, that's not possible. Today, they spend 20 minutes consulting and 40 minutes doing something else. And that something else is what we're getting rid of. So compliance, efficiency, access, quality of care, continuous care management, and instant payments. That's what the platform does. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ratha to add his views because he has really helped us evolve this platform much further to make it relevant to the physicians and patients. So I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Ratha, to add your thoughts. Thank you, Pradeep. Yes, over and above what Pradeep just mentioned, it's a journey of a patient that is very, very important. And this platform serves both the doctor and the patient and also the payer in future, when the insurance companies will be part and parcel of this journey. So today with the access to mobile with every single Indian, it should not be difficult to get access to medical care. 
and while you access the medical care see our custom socially we have parents we have brothers we have sisters we have friends who would like to be part of this journey to know what is happening with me if i had cancer or if i had diabetes if i had hypertension and this is an excellent platform where you have one particular disease say for example diabetes or hypertension or cancer in your practice with a press of one button you could be sending message to hundreds of your patients on what to do what not to do how you can take care of a diabetic foot how you can measure your sugar how you can take care of your uh, retinopathy when your appointment is due reminders can go through and i can create a circle of my family members as i proceed in the journey and similarly the doctor sends me a simple card how are you feeling today is your leg better have you done the dressing have you taken your medicine so i am engaging with my patient while the patient feels very happy that my doctor is thinking about me he is caring for me rather than the doctor wasting his time on doing administrative uh, hassles and making bills and things like that these are useful aspects in patient care and since we always talk of patient centric patient centric patient centric that has never worked because every doctor would want to say what is in it for me why should i go on to your platform what is in it for me i am getting nothing out of it so now here the doctor has also been equally taken care of in terms of his remuneration happening to him in real time and very soon instead of the usd you will have the indian rupee integrated onto this platform so it'll become much much easier as we proceed ahead thank you thank you mr goel dr rata moving on to the next question uh, can you please comment on the advantages of using blockchain technology for patient care as compared to other telemedical certification platforms who don't have this technology again i will um, refer to what uh, dr jayalal said earlier that blockchain represents a tremendous potential to simplify and streamline care but to bring this to a very sharp perspective blockchain is an immutable unmodifiable record of what happened so with this allows us to manage the patient and the doctor's interaction to ensure that that interaction that relationship financially clinically administratively is as it should be and for that to be undeniable so the blockchain effectively is a tool to allow a proper management and enforcement of the rights of the patient and the rights of the doctor so if i were to bring it down we use blockchain to protect both sides this is one statement that blockchain is a mechanism that enforces the rights and the and the responsibilities of both parties without having to have someone else in the room to ensure that so then it also enforces privacy so how the, what blockchain does that other technologies did not permit before blockchain or at least did not permit as easily as blockchain does at the level that blockchain does is the ability for parties to interact with each other in a safe secure manner that is auditable without sacrificing their identity and their privacy and their rights so that's the abstraction in terms of practical terms blockchain is used to connect patients and doctors it is used to transfer the consent for treatment payment of the treatment the um, uh, the responsibility of the doctor to accept the appointment thereby the uh, patient now has a confirmation uh that their data was received by the physician to transport that data and store that data in a very secure way and then to ensure that the transaction logs are such that any disputes later on can be instantly resolved i spoke earlier about removing the the friction or the administrative burden on the physician the reason those administrative burdens exist today is because they are legally required the physician has to maintain the records 
They have to maintain a record of when they accepted the appointment, how much they got paid, what did they advise, did they write a prescription, uh, and, and then the follow-up that is required, as Dr. Ratha mentioned, in terms of care cards and how are you feeling today, the prescription, post-prescription uh, refillment, and so on. So blockchain essentially streamlines that entire process. Now, one thing that would help for you to understand that the most common use of blockchain is payments, right? You're all familiar with the uh, legendary tokens or coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, that are implemented on blockchain. They are essentially tokens that can be used as money. So that's just one way to use blockchain. But in healthcare, the needs are not just payments. Payments are very important, but you also got to manage records. You also got to manage identity. You also have to manage consent. You have to manage permissions and you have to manage auditability of the transaction. And you have to connect people together like the family members, the specialist, the nurse, the pharmacist. So blockchain serves as the fabric on which all these people can collaborate. But the difference between a blockchain and a database is that databases are in the control of one company. Saltcare would control all the data if we were building a database-based system. We would have ability to see what is happening, who is talking to whom and who is paying how much, and even maybe look at the records of the patient because it would be all in my control. Blockchain takes that risk away. In the blockchain world, we cannot see that information. Only Dr. Ratha can see it and only Suhaim can see it. So him knows what he sent, Dr. Ratha knows what he got, but nobody at SolveCare can go in and in, peek inside that transaction and see what they did, what they communicated. But we can track the events. We can track that Suhaim did talk to Dr. Ratha. Dr. Ratha is owed so much money and if that money was paid or not. So it's a right balance between privacy, rights, efficiency, and auditability. And that's a very fine balance, very difficult to achieve and impossible to do when you are running a database-based technology. So that's where blockchain becomes a very powerful empowerment tool for doctor and patient. Thank you, Mr. Goyal. I'll move on to the last question. I'm clubbing to questions uh, because they are similar in nature. Uh, what exactly is the benefit of GTHE to doctors and are we targeting any individual doctors or hospital or are any doctors free to uh, join the platform? If you could just elaborate on that, please. I think the best person to answer is a doctor. <laughs> and I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Ratha to speak about this because he does such a fantastic job of representing the physician's perspective. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. You see the biggest advantage as I can see and as Pradeep just explained, the blockchain technology, that it is taking away my administrative role as a physician, and I'm able to concentrate, devote more time to my patient. And I can do it on the day I want to, the day I don't want to, I can relax. I can give my appointments according to my availability, which on the SolveCare platform will be visible throughout the globe that I'm available on this day at this time. And this is my fee. And the biggest advantage is that initially after my registration with the GTHE, I get an ID that is permanent for my lifetime, number one. Number two, I undergo a strict verification process. So you will not find a quack coming onto this platform because they would, all the registered medical doctors in this country would be verified through XY route. And all that has been defined and blockchain takes care of it. So once your verification is completed and you have set up your practice, you can start enjoying your practice in the form of uh, taking the patient, providing value rather than doing a single teleconsult and say, okay, I'm done with. Now, in the COVID pandemic, we've had many patients who have required uh, to send us their data in the form of 
uh, what is their oxygen saturation, what's their temperature, what's their pulse, what are the inflammatory markers that they have tested uh, shown up. So it was, if I was confining somebody to home quarantine or requesting someone to go to hospital for oxygen therapy or escalating that to an ICU, I could complete the journey from the day patient communicated or consulted first time and give him value throughout his journey over the next 17, 20 days till the patient has fully recovered. It could be, we could be creating one of the largest diabetic network in the world in different parts of this country. You know that India has been declared the diabetic and hypertensive uh, capital of this country. So it's this technology does not only take care of diabetes, hypertension, pediatric, family care. It's multi-speciality across the board. And every speciality has its challenges. And this is where your answers will be on the salt care platform. When you start interacting, when you find the ease, when you find you have suddenly got more time available uh, and you can bring work-life balance into your uh, system as well as enjoy your work. Not only that, you know, for example, if I was communicating with a patient in a country uh, for whom I have received a notification for teleconsult and I'm not allowed to prescribe for that country. So I could request my known patient to please go to his general practitioner in that city, in that country. And I, as a doctor, can communicate with the doctor in that country for that patient and tell him this patient requires so-and-so MRI, so-and-so mm, nuclear scan, so-and-so medication. And he, as a doctor, can locally prescribe that to the patient. That way, we are helping our own brothers, family, sisters living abroad in many ways. So it's not just teleconsult. What teleconsultation or telemedicine in a layman's language, pick up the phone, call up the doctor, take some advice, and they think this is telemedicine. No, there are lots of do's and don'ts. Like this platform is hyper compliant. It is compliant with telemedicine practice guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. So it is going to bring every doctor's life, it will make every doctor's life easy and worth it. And they will start enjoying rather than thinking this as a burden, taking the phones. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goel. Thank you, Dr. Ratha, for addressing the queries. With this, we close the section for the media questions. The press kit is live. You can click on the button to download it. The press release and other documents are available for your reference. In case you have any additional queries, our coordinates are mentioned in the press release. Please feel free to get in touch with us and we would be happy to help you. Once again, thank you all and have a great day ahead. Over to you, Dominic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. So we are now coming towards the end of the official launch of GTHE for India. But what, before we end, I would like to invite doctors and patients alike to not be satisfied with the way how healthcare is today and how it can improve. We are only limited by imagination. Now, GTH is an ever-evolving and growing network. And the way how GTH has grown has been because of so much input that we have got from our community of physicians. And we would love to hear from you as well on your thoughts on healthcare, how it can be improved basically for the benefit of all. Now, before we end, I would like to invite Pradeep back to close the event. Pradeep. Thank you, Dominic. And thank you, Dr. Ratha. Thank you, Dr. Jayalal. Thank you, the, the team that worked very hard to put this event together. Um, you only see me speaking, but behind me is an incredible team that works day and night to make this happen and, and guide and counseling from people like Dr. Ratha who are providing daily feedback to us as to how this should work. 
because software only serves a purpose. The purpose is defined by people who are serving the patient. So we're very proud to be partnered with doctors around the world uh, who are thinking outside the box, who are challenging the status quo. And as you may know, Global Telehealth Exchange is live in more than 20 countries. Today, we are proud to launch it in India. Uh, and our vision is to launch it in over 200 countries over the coming months. So this is a long journey. And I always tell my team, the journey we have begun will take many decades to reach its full, full zenith. But this is a very important journey. And every day we are making a difference. So we invite all of you, the members of the community, members of the media, uh, patients, family members, physicians, to be part of this journey. Because there's only one goal in the end, to allow people to live healthier, happier lives to allow our physicians to be a key part of making that happen. And our job is to streamline that process, break down the barriers, and ensure that care is available when care is needed, regardless of where you live, regardless of what your economic status is, regardless of the language you speak, regardless of whether you live in Bombay or in a small, Mumbai or in a small town away in the middle, it doesn't matter. And regardless of whether you are a person like me who left India 30 years ago, but maintains ties back home, or you go home every month and every year, this should, these, none of this should be barrier to care. So I want to thank the Solvecare team, which is spread across 14 countries. Dominic, who is in Malaysia, Agatha, who is in UK. I'm here in Ukraine today. My team is all over the world, but they all collaborate day and night to make what you saw today happen. And I want to thank Dr. Ratha and his team in India who works every day with us and our development team in India, which is working day and night to make the software better and our developer, developers in Ukraine who are collaborating to test it and ensure that this goes live country by country. So we are a vast organization that has a vast mission and we can only achieve that in collaboration with people uh, and organizations like Dr. Ratha and his organization. So thank you everyone for joining us. We're always here to answer your questions. SolveCare prides itself in transparency. We publish enormous amount of information about the company, about its vision, about its progress. Sometimes you can say we share too much, but there is no other way than to be transparent for you to have trust in what we are doing. Whether you are a physician or a patient or a regulator or a partner, one thing we can assure you is that you will know what is going on. So with that said, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you again for joining us. And for all of you who made this happen, my deepest gratitudes. Have a great day.